medication synchronization questions are a new addition to the GPHC calculations exam. They've been appearing since 2019 year on year and recently they've been cited this year in the June 2022 exam. So I thought it would be a good idea just to have a look at how best to tackle this type of question and what's the different ways in which this question could appear. The technique I'm going to use today will involve a three-step process. The first step will involve us taking a look at the table to identify what information the exam question has actually given us. So the first column involves the drug name itself. The second column along involves the strength of the medication. The third one tells us the frequency of the medication, how many times a day or a week the individual is taking this medication. And the fourth column along tells us the amount remaining. So this is the important part here really. Um, it's telling us how much physical medication the patient's actually got left. Um, this question could come in another format where the column here where it says amount remaining could actually um, tell us the amount of days medication a patient has remaining and that would employ a slightly different strategy. So let's look at this example first for physical amount remaining. So the first step now that we're going to do in step one is we're going to calculate the number of days supply for each drug that the patient's got left because what we want to do is we want to highlight which is the largest number of days of medication that a patient has got left. So starting with metformin here at the top, we can see that we've got 30 tablets taking one a day. So if it's 30 patients taking one a day, that would be 30. Second line down, levothyroxine 50 microgram taking one in the morning, that would be 13. Levothyroxine 25 microgram taking one in the morning, that would be eight. Pyoglitazone 15 milligram taking one a day, that would be five. Coming to a torvastatin 40 milligram, take one at night, so that would be seven day supply. Ramapril 5 milligram capsules, take one twice a day. Now here, the patient's got four remaining and the frequency is one twice a day. So we would do four divided by two, which gives us an answer of two. So we've got two days supply for the ramapril. On the omeprazole 20 milligram capsules, again, the patient's taking one twice a day and they've got 10 remaining. So that would be 10 divided by two to give us five days supply on the omeprazole. So just looking down now at the number of days supply that this patient's actually got left, we can now move on to step two. Step two is where what we could do is we take the largest number of days supply, which is 30 here. So for the drug metformin, we've got 30 days supply. And the question's asking us, how many additional ramapril capsules do we need? So we take the number of days supply for ramapril and we deduct that from the largest number, which is metformin. So 30 take away 2 equals 28. Now that we've got our number, we know that we need 28 days supply of ramapril. The question asks for the answer in capsules. So what we have to do is we have to times our 28. So we move to step three, which is we have to times our 28 here by the frequency of two because the patient's taking one twice a day and we want 28 days supply. So 28 times two equals 56 capsules. So the answer would be 56 capsules. So just to recap, what we've done here is our three-step process where we've calculated the number of days supply treatment for each drug to identify the largest number. We then took the largest day supply, which was 30 for the metformin, from, we deducted ramapril, the two, to get 28 day supply. We then multiplied this by the frequency because it was twice a day to get the number of capsules, which is 56. An example of a medication synchronization question. Looking at the fourth column, we can see that we've been given the remaining amounts. So that means physically the amount of medication the patient has got left. So step one, we're going to calculate the number of days treatment that the patient has got left. 
And all we need to do is we need to look at the frequency here, which tells us it's one a day. So we know we've got 30 days of medication here left. Cocodamol is two QDS, two, four times a day, meaning the patient would be taking eight in total in any one day. So 336 divided by eight gives us 42 days treatment the patient's currently got. Ramapril, one a day, so that would be 16. Lanzaprozole, 15 milligram. The patient's taking one twice a day here. So if they've got 80 capsules remaining and they're taking one twice a day, that would be 80 divided by two to give us 40. The lapenamide, the patient's taking two capsules every four hourly, meaning six times a day. So if they're taking two six hourly, that means they're taking 12 in any one day. 192 divided by 12 gives us a total of 16. Metformin, Metformin the patient's taking one three times a day and they've got 81 tablets left. So 81 divided by three gives us 27. So again, all I'm doing is I'm taking the total amount I'm just going to change colour of the pen to try and help you. I'm taking the total remaining amount here, which I've circled, 81. And all I'm doing, really, guys, is I'm dividing it by the frequency. So three times a day, so 81 divided by three gives me 27. Trazodone, 50 milligram, the patient's taking two a day. So again, I'll take the total number 30. I'll divide this by two to give me 15. Methotrexate. Now, methotrexate is being taken five tablets once weekly. So if we take 25, the patient's got physically 25 tablets here, and we divide that by 5, it gives us an answer of 5. However, that's 5 weeks, because look, we've got 5 tablets once weekly. So 25 divided by 5 tells us that we've got 5 weeks for this patient. And 5 weeks equal 35 days. So all our answers here are in number of days of treatment. So we want to ensure that this answer down here, when we're dealing with weekly medication, remains in days. It's just so much easier, guys, to physically look at that way. Now we can move to step two. And in step two, we can highlight which one has got the largest number of days. So the Cocodamol has got 42 days supply. And our question wants to know how much additional metformin do we need? So we can say, look, the largest number of days, 42, take away our metformin days, which is 27. This gives us an answer of 15 days supply that we need of metformin. However, our question wants the answer in tablets. So we do step three. And step three is to take our 15 days supply and multiply this by our frequency of three. Because the patient's taking three tablets a day giving us an answer of 45 tablets. So the answer is 45 tablets. So this is another example of a medication synchronization question. Now, the reason I've done this third example is to show you how the question could come at you a little bit differently. So in this scenario, again, we've got our fourth column and in our fourth column, it's telling us this time how many days are left that the patient's actually got medication off. It's not telling us how many tablets the patient's got remaining. It's telling us how many days. So if someone's taking, for example, a tablet twice a day, look, if you look at the furuzamide right towards the bottom of the table here, the patient's taking one twice a day and they've got 28 days left, then that means they've got 28 times two, 56 tablets. This is why it's important that when you get an exam question, to always read the columns carefully to understand, to make sure what information it is that they've actually given you. So here we're gonna apply our same principle of the three-step process, but the first step's already been done for us by telling us how many days medication the patient's actually got left. So our frequency of days has already been filled in. Now, if we look down at the frequencies, one jumps out at us straight away, which is the alendronic acid one weekly. Everything else is in terms of 
daily in a 24 hour window so one daily one twice a day one daily one twice a day one at night but there's a frequency of one weekly now the question is asking us how many additional alendronic acid tablets should the patient be prescribed so now we'll complete stage two which is where we'll take our highest number of days from the table here which we can see is allopurinol at 35 and we're going to subtract our alendronic acid because that's what the question wants to know so we take our 14 for alendronic acid and we do 35 take away 14 which gives us a quantity of 21 days supply so because we're doing 35 days supply take away 14 days supply our answer is in days supply so step three is where we now look at our day supply and calculate how many tablets it is that we're actually going to need because the answer is in tablets. So 21 day supply of alendronic acid. Remember, alendronic acid is to be taken once weekly. So if alendronic acid is to be taken once weekly, then 21 divided by 7 equals 3, telling us that we need 3 tablets for this patient.